بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين صلى الله عليه وسلم. So first of all, I would like to thank the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences at the University of Sydney for having invited me to do these lectures on language planning and policy in Morocco and other related issues on multilingualism, French, Arabic, bilingualism, diglossia, teaching of Arabic, French, Amazigh, and English. I hope that you are going to learn from them and that you will improve, that you will improve your awareness of the sociolinguistic situation in Morocco. First thing I would like to say here is that this presentation is taken from a paper that I have jointly published with my colleagues Montserrat Benitez Fernandez from Granada University in Spain and Yanni Abdurreiter from Tilburg University in the Netherlands. The paper is published by Fonko and Jelly Journal, available at this link. A more detailed overview is also published by Edition Armaton at, in Paris at this link. In this overview, we try to be as objective as possible. We try to stay away from the ideological claims existing in the Moroccan linguistic market as we see going on from, now, from time to time. And we try just to overview what is happening and how it happened in terms of language planning and policy decision, decisions. And we present the outcomes of things as they happened in the Moroccan linguistic history. As a beginning, so what we're going to do here is to overview the language politics of Morocco since independence. We will highlight the major stages that language planning and policy in Morocco went through. And these stages are as follows. The introductory stage, the action stage, the empire stage, the acceptance stage. And we're going to overview one by one. But before that, we're going to start with a kind of background just to put you in the picture which we call here as Morocco and its language politics. So Morocco, Moroccan law on language rights is fairly limited because there aren't many texts referring to these rights. As a main text managing the sociolinguistic lives of Moroccans until now, the constitution of the Kingdom of Morocco states in Article 3 that Arabic is the official and national language of the country. Traditionally, Moroccan language policies have hardly taken into account the multilingualism that populates the country. The existence of three varieties of Amazigh, Various Arabic dialects, Standard Arabic, French, Spanish, and English, and its competitive linguistic market appears to be some kind of overlooked. On the contrary, the language policy of Arabicization of Morocco aimed at spreading Standard Arabic with the secondary goal of eliminating the use of French. Until recently, this has been done without taking into account the other languages used in Moroccan society, as we're going to see which are also part of its identity, namely colloquial or dialectal Arabic and the varieties of Amadir. After regaining its independence in 1956, Morocco was faced with formulating a language populist policy that had as a main question whether society should be Arabicized. If yes, is it a valid choice in the global context? If no, is it a decision consistent with Morocco being an Arab Muslim country and a member of the Arab League? Further. How does such a decision position Morocco in the more general geopolitics of the Arabophone context? Language policies of Morocco were and still are known as the policy of okay, excuse me one minute. The policy of Arabicization. And it has two objectives. First, Arabicization claims to develop the Arabic language and, makes, and make it modern. Second, it was and still is intended to promote the substitution of French, the language of the farmer colonizers, with the national language. In doing so, it aims at recovering the prestige of the past and the identity of the Moroccan nation. 
And to achieve these objectives, Arabicization started with the educational system before then moving to other public areas. There are, in fact, three main stages in Morocco's language policy. The first, which we called as the introductory stage, starting with the first nationalist claims during the French protectorate between 1912 and 1956. The second stage is an action stage that dealt with the implementation of the measures that catered for the Arabicization of education and administration. The third stage, which we named as the impasse stage, during which a range of actions stood against Arabization took place. And finally, the, action, uh, the acceptance stage, which begins with the publication of the National Charter of Education in 1999. And it sees the authorities deciding to develop the existing policy of Arabization by incorporating other elements of Moroccan culture, namely the integration of the vernaculars, which are dialect of Arabic and Amazigh, into the official language policy. So now we're going to start with the first stage, which we call as the introductory stage. This stage consists, in fact, of an awareness of the foreign occupation, the French colonial rule that lasted from 1912 to 1956 and a call to fight against it through, among other things, the Arabic language. To erase the cultures of the, organizer, of the colonizers, one wanted to give this language a prestige, namely Arabic, a prestige position, able to retrieve the lost identity and bleakness of the past. Since the 1940s, with the appearance of the Istiqlal party, which sought, among other things, the independence of Morocco during the protectorate, nationalist claims focused on the development and spread of Arabic language and literature to cope with the power of foreign languages. With independence regained in 1956, the nationalist claims on the language became the first major policy of the new government. This was driven by the highest authority of that time, namely King Mohammed V, 1909-1961, and then followed by the government, mainly in the person of Al-Lal Fasi, Prime Minister of Istiqlal Party. In 1958, the Minister of Education, Mohammed al Fasi, decided to start the Arabicization of the educational system. In this first attempt, inadequate methods, inadequate teaching ads, and staff were not trained for this purpose were used as no other means and personnel were available. The result was the total failure of Arabicization, the resignation of the Minister of Education, and a report on the needs of educational reform. Meanwhile, representatives of Egyptian and Syrian educational authorities arrived and a Royal Commission for Educational Reform was established. During the work of the commission, the basic principles of an educational policy were formulated, and namely those were the globalization of education, the unification of educational structures and programs, the Arabicization of the educational programs, and finally, the Moroccanization of the educational staff. Another measure was the creation of the Institute for Studies and Research on Arabization, abbreviated as ERA, in 1960. The purpose of this organization was to coordinate the Arabization of the Arab public domain and make the Arabic language a working code. This era organized the first Congress of Arabization in 1961, in which the Arab Orient and Occident met for the first time to discuss the issues of Arabization and education. The results of this Congress were consolidated by the creation of the Permanent Bureau for the Coordination of Arabization, BCA, a body sponsored by, the Moro by Morocco until 1968, then by the Arab League later. The objective of this institution was to coordinate the Arabization policies in the Arab world, centralizing the results of linguistic research and the development of terminology. 
the, with the organization of the first Congress, Congress on the implementation of Arabicization and BCA in Rabat, the Arabicization of North Africa and more particularly that of Morocco became a pan-Arab issue. The first stage, this first stage, which we call as introduction, was character, is characterized by disorder. It would have been better to order the educational system and make a smooth transition from the French education administration to the Moroccan one, instead of the radical measures that were implemented. Once consolidated, the educational policy of the young Moroccan administration could start a language policy that was in the mediated, meditated on solid functions. Educational authorities have sought to put the cart before the horse, and this result in a failure, resulted in a failure for Arabization within education. The next stage, which we called as the action stage. So during this action stage, the Arabization of the public sectors became a reality. In education, Arabization was implemented at the three different substages, at three different substages. The first, between 1962 and 1966, concerned the Arabization of primary education. The second, regarding Arabization, took place between 1973 and 1975. These dealt with introducing standard Arabic as language of instruction of literary subjects in secondary education, such as philosophy, history, and geography. Then, between 1960, uh, 1982 and 1988, measures regarding standard Arabic as the language of instruction in secondary education were implemented. First, the Arabization of mathematics took place between 1982 and 1985. Then, from 1985 to 1988, the educational authorities completed the Arabization of mathematics and of, and of science and physics in the fourth, fifth, and sixth years of secondary education. Concerning administrative matters, only very few measures were implemented. Employees were the goal of two Arabization campaigns in the 1960s. There was one led by the Ministry of Civil Service and Administrative Reform, and the second by the political party Istiqlal. In addition to these two initiatives, the domain of justice was the target of a specific campaign whereby the Arabic language could be or should be the only one used in the courts. Ultimately, the Arabization of Morocco have been made, or ultimately, all decisions implementing the Arabization of Morocco have been made during this action stage. As stated above, the end of this step coincides with the Arabization of science in secondary education, but it did not go further than that. For example, universities have never been the subject of a specific language policy, and some sectors of the administration have been more closely targeted than others. Further, the economic sector has virtually never been Arabicized. Although in the early 1990s, the state proposed measures moving towards the recognition of bilingualism, while the Amazigh associative movement gained power, structure, and popular support. Proposals and their implementation have encountered periods of inactivity. And now we move on to the next, last, the next third stage, which we call as the impasse stage. With the reinforcement of Arabization, Arabization up to baccalaureate level, language policy stagnated. That's why we're given the title of impasse stage in terms of things have stagnated a little bit because of some counter reactions. So during this impasse stage, a range of actions against Arabization took place. Two movements stood against it. So, on the one hand, the claims against Arabicization and an expansion of language rights proliferated. 
including those by, made by the Amazigh cultural movement in favor of their languages and cultures. Meetings between intellectuals and people belonging to Amazigh, to the Amazigh associative movement resulted in the publication of two texts. The first of these texts is the Charter of Agadir on, the, on linguistic and cultural rights dating back to 1991. The document highlights that Moroccan identity rests on Amazigh and Arabic. The main uh, demands of the Charter of Agadir can be summarized as follows. First, it claimed the status of national language for Amazigh alongside Arabic. And second, it opted for complete development for a complete development of Amazigh, implying more visibility in media its integration in education and research, and its promotion in all fields of culture and artistic creation of Morocco. In reaction to this, in August 1994, King Hassan II stated that the three dialects are part of the components of our authenticity. It is essential, at least at the primary level, to provide slots for the teaching of our dialects. The Manifest Berber, or the Manifest, Berber Manifesto, is a document signed by celebrities from the worlds of culture, research, art, and business in 2000, contributed to fulfill the Amazigh language demands. The Manifesto sets the main claims already made in the Charter of Agadir on the acceptance and development of Amazigh language and culture. On the other hand, during this Empire stage, some measures going towards Arabic French bilingualism uh, flourished. So, positive attitudes towards Arabic French bilingualism started during, the 19, during 1999, the last years of the reign of King Hassan II. Resulted, and this resulted in effective follow up measures. At the same time, educational authorities introduced bilingual bachelor programs in universities. Faced with, these two, faced with these two opposing movements to Arabicization, a counter-reaction came up in the form of a publication of the publication of a circular 5898 of December 1998, forcing public institutions and municipalities to use the Arabic language in both external and internal correspondence. And this shows that Morocco was far from being completely Arabicized and that a bilingual Arabic-French approach was still present. Finally, we have the last stage, which we call as the acceptance stage. And with the publication of the National Charter of Education that has renewed the question of languages in Morocco, Language policy since 1999 has resumed its march. This national charter, in fact, became the subject of a heated debate. Before dealing with this text of this charter, it must be said that this document is neither a legal text nor a language policy. It is rather a piece of educational policy in which proposals for language policy are included. The proposals of the Charter aimed at developing proficiency in both written and spoken Arabic, that is standard and colloquial Arabic, while opening up to foreign languages as well, without specifying which languages. Articles 61, 63, 65, and 66 of the Charter organize its teaching in a gradual manner in the educational system. In addition, a renewal of the learning methodology is recommended in Article 111. Other means of uh, reaching proficiency and development of Arabic language, Article 112 and Article 113, provide for the creation of an academy of the Arabic language. The main new feature that appears in the Charter is the opening up of Moroccan society to Morocco's mother tongues, dialectal Arabic and Amazigh. Only the Amazigh language is explicitly referred to alongside various names such as regional languages 
and dialect, Article 61, local dialect, Article 115, and mother tongues, Article 63. In addition, these dialects, the term of, is the choice of the academic authorities that drafted the text of the charter, may be employed in the educational system, that is to say these dialects may be employed in the educational system to support the learning of standard Arabic, Article 115. The acceptance of the existence of dialects would mean that they can be chosen to support the academic discourse. The teaching of Amazigh has become a reality since it was introduced in the beginning of the new millennium, in the first years of primary education in the public system. Continuing with the opening towards native languages, the Charter announces in Article 116, and only for the case of Amazigh, the development of research centers, the training of teachers, and the preparation of curricula for the inclusion of Amazigh in education. Language policy measures proposed by the Charter affect all languages present in Morocco. Until the publication of the Charter, language policy in Morocco focused on the teaching of Arabic only. However, the Charter demonstrates the acceptance of other elements that are part of Moroccan identity. This document and the implementation of its proposals connect language policy so far with the nature of identity claims made by Amazigh community, by the Amazigh community and cultural associations. The implementation of the Charter has thus reinforced the movement of the revival of native languages in Morocco and a debate on their use in education. The most the most obvious effects of realization of this document were the introduction of the Amazigh language in education and based on royal decree based on a real decree royal decree of July 13 2001 the creation of the Royal Institute of Amazigh Culture ERCAM and this institute is responsible for developing educational programs for teaching for the teaching of Amazigh and the selection of a writing system, the Tifina, namely the Tifina alphabet. In addition, the organization is responsible for teacher training and the standardization of the language. So the opening towards Moroccan vernaculars, favored by the Charter, has created and planned effects as well, such as the revival of dialectal or Moroccan Arabic. So in Arabic domains, further other effects, such as the flourishing artistic creation in dialectal Arabic, Moroccan Arabic, editions of newspapers and literary works in Moroccan Arabic dialect, uh, the its use in the media, let's say the use of Moroccan Arabic in the media, and the use of the Quora Foundation makes the Moroccan Arabic an academic discourse. And these types of manifestations are all subjects of current sociolinguistic investigation. As it stands out, though, there is a strong indication for counter-reacting. In spring 2008, the Istiqlal Party introduced with the support from the Justice and, the, the Justice and Development Party, the PJD, a bill in favor of the Arabization of public life and Moroccan administration. And this triggered a new protest movement from Amazigh associations. Another counter reaction was expressed by Morocco's King Mohammed VI, who in speech to the nation on the 17th of June 2011, proposed a modification of the constitution with as a major linguistic change that Amazigh, namely that Amazigh language would be mentioned alongside Arabic as official language of the kingdom. And this draft was approved in the referendum held on 1st of July 2011, an overwhelming majority of the voters said yes to, among other things, or among others, the adoption of Amazigh as official language of the kingdom next to standard Arabic. Next to making Amazigh a national language, the new constitution's Article 5 speaks of the preservation of Hassani, as well as the protection of cultural expressions and languages in, used in Morocco. In this context, as we can notice, it is noteworthy that the first time that mother tongues were mentioned in official documents. 
and which was the Charte Nationale d'Education et Formation. Thank you very much.